Okay, thank you, Lauren, and thank you, Florian, for inviting me. Okay, I'm going to share the screen. Yeah, so, okay. <clears throat> so, thank you for inviting me to participate in this webinar. So, I am Carlos Badres Olmedo. Uh, I am a researcher from the Ontology Engineering Group and also an assistant prof professor in the Universidad Politécnica de Madrid. And I'm going to present the Trust for COVID project is a project that we propose to create a knowledge graph. This is trying to represent the drugs that we used uh, during the, the, the pandemic to define the clinical control of the, of the coronavirus. So the idea is that uh, during the COVID-19 uh, pandemic, uh, some worldwide institutions uh, try to identify or to create uh, data sets with uh, scientific research articles that are related to coronavirus. This kind of information uh, could be useful for hospital pharmacies, for clinical practitioners. So our research group, the ontology engineering group, trying to promote how can we uh, retrieve information, retrieve knowledge from this kind of data. So the first step was, uh, was to identify what uh, is the most important data set that we can use in this case, this from the European Union uh, was provided the COVID-19 European data portal, also the lead COVID data set, and mainly the, the COVID-19 open research data set, data set was the most important data set that combines information from the PadMed, BioArchive, MedArchive, and Archive information, also combined information from the World Health Organization, and provide more than 400,000 uh, articles that we need, we, we think, we thought that we can uh, leverage to provide knowledge. So combining this kind of knowledge with the uh, health, service, health service from the from the from Madrid, the CERMAS, we provide the mechanisms to create knowledge graph that we can uh, exploit and provide knowledge uh, from this kind of, of people. So first of all, we define a workflow with different steps that we provide not only the step, but also the recommendations, the steps that you can uh, follow to create finally a knowledge graph and also facilitate the exploitation. So uh, we define a six step uh, workflow. The first step is the harvesting. In this step, the idea is that you need to identify the data set that is related to coronavirus and also to evaluate if the data is completely available or not. The second step is the pre-processing because you need to organize the data that is provided in this kind of, of data set uh, because this date of data is an structure because we are working with tests. So we need to modelize an structured way of the data and then move to the third step, which is information extraction. In this step, we need to discover the main elements of this kind of data that we can use to create the knowledge graph. In our case, the main elements are the biomedical concepts, for example, the drugs, the diseases, and the genetic information. And then we need to define a formal uh, description of the domain, which is the fourth step, which is the semantification. In this case, we need to create an ontology to define the relations between the biomedical concepts and to define all the concepts, all the elements that finally appear in the knowledge graph. The next step is the knowledge graph generation. In this step, we need to define the rules to create the instances in the knowledge graph. And finally, we can provide the mechanisms to exploit, to facilitate the use of the information that the knowledge graph contains. So, Focus on the first step. The objective is to identify the relevant data sources and also to evaluate the, avail the availability of the data. Our proposal is that you, you need to perform a systematic literature review, taking into account the main concepts of the coronavirus and then define the data set, for example, from digital repositories, PubMed, BioArchive, and so on, but also combining with other sources, for example, clinical collections from the coordinating corpus, uh, the lead COVID data set, and also additional resources, for example, patents, encyclopedic articles from Wikipedia, 
and all this data is uh, organized in this first step. In the next step, we need to transform this unstructured data, which are the test, into tables, into unstructured data. Then the methodology that we propose is to identify the minimal information unit. The most easy way to transform test into a structured way is to define the full test of the article as the data. In our opinion, this is not the best way to do that. And our proposal is to define as minimal information unit the paragraph of the articles, because in that, uh, in that area, you can discover all the references or the relation between the biomedical concepts. Then the next step is the information extraction. In this case, the idea is to create annotations based on that paragraphs that discover drugs, diseases, and genetic information. In our experience, we fine tune different language model for each different biomedical concepts. So the idea is that you need to define a specific language model to, the, to identify drugs and also to normalize the drugs according to different vocabularies because in different countries, we have using different uh, standard codes. So once we have the annotations with the entities and also the codes, we can uh, define the formal uh, space to describe all this information. This is the step that we need to create an ontology. In the biomedical domain exists a lot of ontologies. So the idea is not to create from scratch an ontology. The idea is to reuse existing ontologies and to provide the missing information in the new ontology. In our case, the ontology, uh, okay, sorry, sorry. The ontology was evoca, and in our case, the missing information was to provide the evidence that support the relations between drugs, between diseases, and between genetic information. So in our case, we use uh, the unified medical language system and also this DISNET platform to all this information is combined and also provide, this is the purple area, the information about the evidence. And which is the evidence? The evidence, the evidence is the paragraph where the relation between this element is supported in the scientific article. Once we have defined the formal uh, domain, the ontology, we need to identify the instances, the, the claims, the statements retrieved from the scientific articles to create instances in the knowledge graph. This is the knowledge graph generation step. So our, our methodology is proposed to create rules to identify using the previous model language the entities and also the relations between them. Finally, once we have the ontology, we have the instances, we are able to identify the nodes in the graph. For example, the blue ones are the elements, the orange ones are the relations between them, and the purple ones are the evidence that support this kind of relations. The evidence in the, is the minimal uh, information unit, which is the paragraph, and also the articles. Once we have the knowledge graph, finally, we are able to facilitate the exploitation of the information. The, best, the first step is, of course, we can uh, use Sparkle queries. It's a, a specific language model that you can create queries to exploit the language, uh, the knowledge graph, but this is uh, this required a uh, expert uh, in this kind of domain. So our second methodology is to create a question answering interface that provide the information, not only from the knowledge graph, but also combining from external uh, sources, from others uh, knowledge graph, from others uh, document connections, and then support question in natural language to provide answers also in natural language. So our, our platform is the Dust for COVID uh, platform. So all this kind of information is publicly available. The knowledge graph, the models, the data set, and also the services are, these resources are completely free, are completely public, and these are available from these URLs. So thanks for your attention and I'm able to, to answer any question that you have.